And I was crashing at my buddy Mike's place for the night. I was about 16 or so. I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I wake up to cops standing over me, guns drawn. We're charged with possessing stolen property. One of his rooms was filled with stuff. I had no idea. Now, I'd been picked up before. The coppers knew me, they knew my brother, they knew my cousin. But I was either smacked in the head and told to go home, or they'd call my brother and he'd smack me in the head and tell me to get home. This time, it was different. That's Patrick Keating, reading from his play Inside Out. The script follows his story from a youth in prison to a career on the stage. But talking about his past wasn't always something Patrick was comfortable with. I never, um, never really told anyone about, you know, I was always very shy about it, thinking that, you know, all the people find out about my background, you know, nobody's going to hire me or people are going to look differently at me. So I always kept it to myself. And then I guess about, oh, since I'm getting older, right, (laughs) I decided, well, it doesn't matter anymore. If people haven't hired me by now, they're not, they certainly aren't going to. So, uh, yeah, I decided uh, I'd just do it. Patrick's story begins decades ago in Montreal. Uh, I guess, well, I was quite young. Um, you know, I got gone into drugs when I was fairly, uh, I guess, not even a teenager, you know, 12, right, 12, 13. And, uh, met people at first that was just they were just into the drug scene and then you meet other people that just don't do drugs but are just concerned with money and violence and then you start hanging around with them and then it it sort of snowballs right for years patrick was in and out of the juvenile system until a failed bank heist as a young man put him in a federal prison for armed robbery then history intervened in 1980 with the quebec referendum looming he was given the opportunity to transfer west. By chance, he landed at the Matsqui Institution in Abbotsford. It was one of two prisons in BC experimenting with university courses as a way to rehabilitate prisoners. Included in that program was an active inmate theater troupe. Though he was hesitant at first, Patrick signed up, a choice that would change the course of his life. You know, I'd never really, I didn't know, the, I mean, I knew what theater was, but I didn't really know theater. I'd never been to a play or anything like that. No, and, and when you're inside, you're very, um, you're very guarded. There's things that could happen at any second, and if people see weakness, then you know you're a target. Right? And I'm not a big man. You, I mean, you're taught no, no, no. The mo- emotions for weak people, right? You do not express emotion. So to be able to access that and to actually express emotion in front of people, people that you don't know, that's just insane. So it was, yeah, it was a, a huge challenge. And then I found out that we're actually doing this production that we're, I thought we're just going to be reading it, maybe figure, you know. But yeah, it's a, it was like a major operation. People came in and, they, you know, there was about 200 people that uh, they had to get security clearance in order to get into the institution. And, and I, I was cast in one of the roles and, um, and really, really enjoyed it. I was actually supposed to get out um, before the play finished and um, I ended up putting off my release date to, uh, to, to finish the play. The, um, yeah, they were, I don't know if they were thrilled at that or what, but they were, quite, they were pretty surprised anyways. And I said, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not leaving then. Right? And they thought that was a joke. And I, said, yeah. and I said, no, seriously, I'm not leaving. Soon after performing, Patrick was released. Weeks later, there was a major riot at the prison. The riot squad marched into the front gate as the prisoners were moving toward the assembly point. In just 15 minutes, it was all over. A massive show of force intimidated the prisoners and avoided more bloodshed. In the wake of the riot, many of Matsqui's programs, including theater, were cut, and a number of the inmates were transferred. Some of those involved in theater were moved to Victoria's William Head Institution, where they later began William Head on stage. That company has now been performing to the public for over 30 years. Ingrid Hansen was the director of their 2013 production. She says she's seen how theater can be a positive force in the life of inmates. I think a lot of the guys that I've worked with have, in different ways, been told that they are no good all their life. And I think that to some extent you start to believe it. It took a few weeks of that repetition of praise and 
and really genuine thank yous from people that they had never met before until one of the guys said to me, you know, I never thought that I would be ever good at anything in my life other than what I used to do when I was in crime. By the end of the project, we had feedback from... um, like from the guys themselves saying like, wow, I have no, I can't believe I've, I've changed so much. And, and, and also feedback from some different personnel working at the prison saying, I can't believe how, how much so-and-so has grown, how much so-and-so has changed. If it's done in a vacuum, you know, then yes, it'll help to a certain extent. But if you have people from the community coming in, you know, and realizing that people can change, that they're not, everybody isn't a monster, right? They may go back, I mean, if they had a drug problem, an alcohol problem, they may go the, back to that. But for the most part, for them to get out of a, a, a cycle of violence and realize that they are part of a world and they have a, a part to play in it, Dr. Stephen Duguid taught UVic classes at Matsqui in the 1970s and later coordinated Simon Fraser University's courses there. He led a 1998 independent study tracking the effects of arts and education in BC prisons and later wrote a book about it. He sees two sides to the issue. I think the theater, my view of it was they were getting a, a, a sense of real life experience. The director was from outside, he came in and taught them about how to, how to, how to act. And I think, I think we ended up teaching a kind of another cultural language that they could adopt. They didn't abandon the one they had, but they had another one now they could use, which was ones you, we, we would probably use and, and get by. But on the other hand, people were upset that their co- kid couldn't get into at, at UBC, whereas this guy in jail is getting a degree. <laughs> For Patrick, theater did form a bridge to the outside world. After his release, he got in touch with an acting company that had visited the prison and volunteered labor for the chance to learn. But adjusting to life outside was tough, and a few years later he was back in Matsqui, again for bank robbery. After serving his sentence, he decided this time he wasn't going back. He enrolled in theater studies at SFU and made the decision to cut himself off from his old life. Well, I had to make like a concerted effort because I was um, was known for a particular thing and there were people that I had worked with before and knew and considered like family right and I had to say no don't you know don't ever call me again over the next two decades Patrick's face would become a regular sight on Vancouver stages he would act in dozens of plays and local TV productions including the Highlander Supernatural and the X-Files in that same time he's been collecting stories from his life When he recently shared some of his writing, he realized it connected with people and decided it was the right time to tell his story. It's quite interesting, you know, because a lot of people, they come up to me on the side and they go, yeah, yeah, there's a, my uncle was, uh, did some time in jail or they, you know, and they've been sort of hushed about it, right? And it's, so a lot of people do, they keep it inside. Patrick has spent the last month workshopping his piece with the help of a Canada Council grant. And he's planning to present it to the public as a finished play this spring. He sees it as a story of hope, living proof that a lost youth doesn't have to mean a lost life. Part of the, the thing that I'm trying to do with the piece is to show that there, people are human, you know? It doesn't matter where they are or what they've been through. Right? We're escorted through 150 yards of old dark passageway under the streets of Montreal and up into the juvenile court building. Mike wasn't laughing, he was scared. He was about to turn 18 in a couple of weeks. Was worried he'd be sent to adult prison. I was called in first. I didn't know who was who, but told the room, everything's mine, Mike's got nothing to do with nothing. I was 16. I didn't have to worry about adult prison. Mike went home. I was sent to Berthalette, a more modern juvenile prison with bright lights, razor wire and steel bar cells with doors that slammed shut. Half a country and century away, the only bright lights are those on the stage. The doors that slammed behind him as a youth, ironically, opened new ones for him as an adult, and unlocked a passion that changed the course of his life.